Welcome back, everyone, to Grand Tactician The Civil War as we continue my first time playing through the Confederate career mode. Uh, it is May of 1862. I now command the Army of the Peninsula, uh, and we're going to try and build that army up. It is a core level command, which means I can command uh, multiple divisions underneath me, which means I have the opportunity to build a substantial force, maybe into the like 30,000 man range. So uh, that's where we're at right now. I did just request uh, some additional units. I've got Nathan Bedford Forrest as a new brigade commander. Uh, and in two weeks, we'll have an entirely new brigade in Chatham's division, uh, including one that's going to have Whitworth rifles, 600-yard range. For the first time, we're going to have those. We need to build up some more prestige so we can get some better weapons for the rest of our units. Uh, but we'll start building up a nice field army with what we've got. We're going to have 15,000 men when that new brigade arrives in the next two weeks. That's a force we can do something with. Let's uh, see where we're at at the moment. Is that where I am? Because I don't, I don't see myself there. I think we might be somewhere else. Let's see where the divisions are. All right, so we're over here, actually. There's da Davidson's division. Chatham's division is actually somewhere else, so we're kind of spread out a little bit. So we gained some prestige for arriving in the defensive zone that we were assigned. Um, my headquarters is there. Chatham's division is there. Where's Davidson's division? I've ordered him up there, but he's not there yet. Uh, in the meantime, though, that extra prestige we just gained is going to be enough for us to go ahead and upgrade some of these other units. Let's get the uh, 5th Tennessee upgraded with some Enfields. So that'll give us... <clears throat> Decent weapons there. I, there's finally some decent cavalry weapons available, but I don't have enough prestige to get them. We need 171. Uh, I don't know if we're able to upgrade. We have a couple of units with Springfield muskets. Looks like we do have enough prestige to upgrade at least one of those. So I do want to get those cavalry units upgraded, though. My men are complaining about a bad state of supply, and that's not something I really am in position to do much about. There is a supply depot being constructed up here that will be ready in 19 days. In the meantime, though, I am in kind of a rough spot as far as supply goes. I'm thinking we might have to march into Maryland, do a little foraging, and maybe see if we can't bring on a battle. Let me get everybody into an offensive state first, just so they'll actually support one another if it comes to it. Uh, and we're going to on, march on Frederick. I realize I haven't been given such orders, but the whole point of having my own command is that I can do stuff like this. So let's go ahead and start marching on Frederick, see if we can't get the Union to follow us. I expect a couple of these divisions from the Department of Pennsylvania. Oh, so our guys actually just said, nope, we're not doing it. They saw a unit there in Frederick and decided to just back out. That's a little frustrating. At least try and make contact with the enemy. All right, so we just got a notification about a disaster at Fredericksburg. So that's down here. It looks like there's a major move by the Union. So honestly, we're going to actually pull back our forces. There's a supply depot here. Uh, and right now my army is complaining about the supply situation. So I think that's what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and pull our army back to the supply depot. And that will also put us in a better position to be near to where some of these Union forces are that are coming down our way. Got some storms happening here, some muddy roads, so we're moving slowly. But I had reports of a Union division of 8,500 men, the Army of Lincoln. Uh, nearby, so I'm actually sending one of my divisions over there to see if we can't make contact with the enemy, if he's even indeed still there. Plus, it doesn't hurt to have him out there. Oh, oh, is that Grant? Oh, ho, 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 ho. bring on Ulysses S. Grant. He's apparently out east, and we've got an opportunity to take him on. We'll see how our brand new army does. All right, we're going to be taking on General Grant at uh, the Manassas Battlefield. That's the map we're on anyway for the Battle of Rapidan Station Bridge. Uh, it looks like the objectives are going to be over here on the east side, the McLean uh, Farm and Blackburn's Ford, which is not traditionally part of the actual historic battlefield, which was much more fought over in this area here. 
Uh, the first battle of Bull Run was all pretty much fought right in this area between Matthews Hill and Henry Hill. That's where most of the fighting is going to take place. Uh, so we're going to bring our army down in here in this area. I do outnumber him by a substantial amount. So I'm going to send some units across Island Ford and maybe try to demonstrate or at least draw him in a distraction a little bit on uh, over by Blackburn's Ford on this side. Uh, we're going to send most of our force over this way. So I've got a little bit of a sighting of some of the enemy dug in here near Island Ford. So he may not be over here like I thought. So I'm sending Charles Winder with the 4th North Carolina Cavalry up to scout the area near the objective just to see what's going on there while the rest of our army moves in. It's uh, almost 3 o'clock. It's June, so we still have several hours of fighting uh, available to us. But i um, not sure how far we're going to get on the first night. All right, 4th North Carolina is moving into position. Not spotting anybody here. He may not even be holding the objectives. Right, in fact, I'm going to go ahead and send them to the McLean farm now. We're going to send Brian's brigade up ahead. There's only about 2,700 men there. I might go ahead and send Wilcox's 2,700 men as well. I'm going to send them right up here because it looks like the enemy's actually dug in on the north side of Bull Run Creek. Interesting. I started seeing the enemy moving toward the objective. I pulled my cavalry out just in the nick of time. We're going to go ahead and dig in right along behind this little stream here. Although I don't expect we're going to see much fighting on the first day, which isn't actually a bad thing because that's going to give me the chance to kind of regroup and reorganize my army in a way that I want them to before we actually go into fight. Some of these brigades are really small. And I hadn't realized just how small they were. Like McClaw's Brigade. There's only about 500 men in each of those units. We're on to day two. So I've got my army dug in where I'd like them to be. I have no idea where the enemy is at this point. So we're going to try to scout him out. Where'd my cavalry go? Actually, I can't find my... My one big cavalry. Oh, they're right here in the center. That's why. Uh, Fourth North Carolina Cavalry. Let's move them forward. Scout ahead and see if we can figure out what's going on. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and shift these guys over a little bit. I would guess they're probably still up there. Oh, yeah. He's there. He is where I expected him to be the first time, which is dug in uh, at the McLean home. So we are going to have to advance. And I'm going to start with McClaw's small brigade over here. We'll take D.H. Hill with his small brigade and actually bring them across too. Uh, and then this is going to be my attacking force, the bigger brigades that have a little more power behind them. So our units are starting to get into position. I forgot I have these uh, Whitworths, so even at a long distance... I've got some units that are already engaged in fighting, like the 13th Maryland. They're in a position where they can fire, but the enemy cannot. I'm moving a couple of brigades up into position on their left. We're moving in, kind of face their front as well. Let's get Wilcox's brigade moved up right here. Once I get everybody into position, we're going to try to... Uh, Move Nathan Bedford Forrest a little more on his flank, if I can. But that's going to involve kind of spreading out here a little more. Let's get our artillery moved up as well. Get it into position where it can actually support the attack a little bit. I've got four batteries, so I want to make sure all of them are in there. So we're going to make contact with D.H. Hill's brigade over here on the left. 
Uh, I actually did not mean for that cavalry to ride up into the front like that, but this actually might work out to my advantage. It looks like my movement toward his left has actually caused him to break his formation and start moving forward on me. Now my artillery is not quite into position yet, but otherwise I like where we're at. Let's get my generals moved up a little bit. Hopefully we can knock out this battery. We'll cross over with McClaw's brigade. Get in behind him a little bit. And then I'm going to sit tight. I'm going to send skirmishers forward. We're still trying to organize our lines here a little bit. I'm going to send the cavalry out on the flank. All right, let's start sending out these other skirmishers. A lot of North Carolina units in this army. Some Virginia. All right, I want to send D.H. Hill skirmishers out and let his skirmishers deal with this battery. And then I think we're going to just wait a little bit. We don't want to wait too long though because we don't want another day to go by before we've destroyed his army. But I want to be cautious. This is my first time using this army. There's a lot of a lot of fire happening between the skirmishers right now. Looks like my skirmishers are successfully wiping out this battery. McClaws is coming in behind them now. Let's go ahead and send the last of our skirmishers out. Then I want to wait and see what he does a little bit here. And once once this North Carolina cavalry is out on my flank where I want it, I'm going to have Nathan Bedford Forrest start kind of right obliquing a little bit here. I want to I want to shift a little further over to try and get on his flank if I can while keeping everybody else in front of him. Okay. So let's shift the two Maryland regiments over a little further. Surprised I've only inflicted 55 casualties so far. That's a little disappointing. All right, I need to get these skirmishers here up, oh, trying to neutralize that battery if I can. Send some skirmishers out from these units. All right, our skirmishers are going toe to toe with this battery now. It's usually the most effective way of silencing a battery. He's got five guns. They're kneeling. I don't remember seeing skirmishers kneel before like that. Maybe they have. Alright, they're getting out of there. Just too much firepower. That's alright. Let's keep after them. Wilcox's brigade is demoralized? Really? What is Wilcox's brigade even doing? They're just sitting there. How are they demoralized? Unstable. All right, seriously? Let's get these guys rallied a little bit here. I've got 2,700 men. You haven't even fought yet. They've all got Springfield muskets. We're eventually going to need to get better weapons for them. All right, so that battery turned around. They're facing my skirmishers on the other side now. So let's send some more skirmishers to try and hit them from this side. I don't want to march into the face of the enemy while those guns are still there. In the meantime, though, let's go ahead and 
start moving forward with these guys. Try to get on his flank. And then once, once he turns to deal with that threat, then we'll advance with the rest of our army. I like where we're at at the moment. Really only inflicted, inflicted 90 casualties so far. That's crazy. All right, we're starting our advance. forest over here closer to where his brigade is. Alright, I think we've neutralized that battery. I don't like the status of the morale of some of our units in the center. I'm not crazy about that. I do, however, like the fact that he has one unit that has come out to face me on the right, so we can drive them off. Now we're going to start seeing the enemy take some casualties. Come on, neutralize that battery. We've driven off the 52nd Pennsylvania. We can advance a little further. Looks like he's going now. I want to go park the 4th North Carolina at this bridge. That's one of his escape routes. And I'm actually going to bring Hill's division. No, 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 no. We need them to go this way and around, if they can. I'd love to get that whole division back there if I can. Nope, stop, stop, stop. I don't want you going that way. Go up here. All right, let's start moving. We're gonna shift over some more to the right. I don't know what in the world my sixth Georgia is doing. All right, once Hill gets up here, we're gonna send him over this way, and then hopefully get him over to McLean's Ford. Alright, we got a long way to go in this battle, but we're starting to rack up some casualties on the enemy. Starting to gain some prestige. Let's call in the skirmishers here. up some guns. Oh, okay. What are you doing here, buddy? Okay, we've inflicted almost two to one casualties now. That's good. Morale's pretty low for the Federals already. Come on, Hill, get over there. Once he gets more in this area, we'll give the orders to actually move over to the Ford. I'm hoping I can get him there before 
the enemy starts trying to retreat. I'm going to give individual brigade orders. Do it that way. All right, another Ohio unit broke. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Feeling good, feeling real good about this first battle with our new army. Taking very few casualties now while driving up the enemy casualties. That's what we like to see. Get forced back behind his unit a little bit. Uh, some of these units are actually going to just retreat around me, apparently. So here's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to pull them back across the fort. Surprisingly, we're still showing as a minor defeat somehow. All right, I want McClaws back behind his line. couple of these brigades actually covering these crossings. We're starting to have some ammunition issues here. Let's move forward. See if we can't grab the objective. These guys are exhausted and low on ammo. That concerns me because we might hit the end of the day without having broken the enemy. And then he might have a chance to redeploy. So we might have to start thinking about being a little more aggressive. Look at all these units that are breaking. But somehow somehow we're not winning the battle. This is crazy. Because morale's down to just 33 for the army. I do need to grab, grab this other objective point. I think that will help. Ah, 26 North Carolina somehow got turned around. They were facing the wrong way. baby. Start shifting. There we go. Now it's a minor victory if it ends. His morale's at 30. It's almost nighttime. Darn it. I'm hoping he'll withdraw at the end of the day if it comes to it. Alright, let's get a little more aggressive. might cost us some casualties, but it might win the battle. There we go. Now it's shifting. 18% inflicted on the enemy. His morale is just 26. We grabbed the objective point. So we hold both the objectives now. And we're slowly squeezing him to death. But he's, he's rallying his units way too easily. Come on, baby. Keep shifting. We're going to run out of time. It's 7.30. This is a really nice victory for us, though, if it holds. There it is. He withdrew. We only lost 700 men. 
Uh, earned a nice amount of prestige, 1,100 prestige at the cost of 700 men. That is a nice amount because we can replace those losses and then some with that prestige. We defeated General Grant and his uh, 7,500 men by inflicting 1,800 casualties. So that's me one, Grant zero so far. Okay, I've used my prestige to add another division. Uh, this is going to have an additional six brigades. It's going to take about a month to get most of them in, but once we get them all, we're going to have over 20,000 men in our army. Uh, and then the next thing I want to do with some prestige is upgrade uh, these units. Uh, of course, 3rd Virginia Cavalry has only got 100 men. Honestly, if I had another unit I could merge them into, I probably would, but I don't at the moment. So uh, I think we'll probably lay low for a little bit now. Checking to see how much it's going to take for us to get a promotion to Major General. Uh, we need about 1,100 prestige right now to make that happen, which that's really not the priority for me. Building the army is. Uh, 185, that's actually pretty close to what I weigh in real life, so we'll take that. Um, we're up to 37th all time on the list. Let's look and see who's still ahead of us on the Confederate side. Robert E. Lee, King of Spades. Yeah, that was actually a nickname he had early on. Stonewall Jackson, Longstreet, Albert Sidney Johnston, John Gordon. Some pretty good generals up there. So my army, uh, one of my divisions was involved in a, a skirmish, and I wasn't present for it, so I couldn't take lead on it on the battlefield, but they got about a 1,000 prestige out of it, uh, which we have flipped into uh, an additional cavalry unit. It's going to be 42 days before we get the 2nd Kentucky Cavalry. Uh, another brigade of infantry that will go into Jackson's division, uh, and I consolidated a couple of smaller uh, regiments, and then I've recruited a new uh, Kentucky regiment for this uh, division here and another battery as well. So all together, that's going to get me. I do need to get some artillery for this division here, but not yet. Uh, all together, that's going to get me up to almost 25,000 men, only 23 guns. We definitely need some more artillery for this army. Uh, but we're starting to put together an army. The idea here is that by 1863, I've got a 40, 50,000 man army in the field that I can command. And I can really start to affect things on the battlefield. Looking at the overall strategic situation in the east, uh, morale looks good. Morale of the army is not good. Only 29 on the morale of the armies. That's a major problem. Uh, we're also out manned 153 to almost 100,000. Um, battles won favors us a little bit. We've actually lost more men in casualties uh, than they have. Uh, and there's really just nothing happening on the European intervention front. Uh, so one of the things that really needs to happen is that the morale of the armies needs to come up. And unfortunately, as long as our armies un are unhappy and don't have enough supplies, that's not going to improve any. Uh, we've got unhappiness, bad weather, low ammunition, and low food. All of that is just a disaster waiting to happen. So um, looks like the Union has moved in pretty deeply into central Virginia. Basically, we're cut off from Richmond at this point because the Union has a line running all the way across. I think that's part of the issue. So I think we're going to probably have to move south. But the problem is there's a big Union force in between us uh, and the places we need to go. Uh, let's see, there's 11,000 men there, there's 11,000 men there, so there's about 22,000 men uh, in the Army of Northeastern Virginia and those two divisions between us, and then there's another division moving up here with 7,000 men. Uh, so our best bet is probably to run down through the Shenandoah Valley to around New Market, come up over the mountains, and try to get at them that way, or just go right down the Shenandoah Valley to Stanton and maybe hit them there. I think that might be the best bet. So I'm going to go ahead and start moving everything down that way. While well, we've still got good campaigning weather. We have to give all of our divisions orders independently of each other. Of course, a lot of my men I don't have yet. So that number that shows 25,000 is a little misleading because basically this whole 3rd Division, Jackson's Division, doesn't exist yet except on paper. 
we do have one looks like all of one brigade and part of a second brigade average, arriving in the next two days. Well, the good news is that our food issue has been resolved. Now that we're in the breadbasket of the Confederacy, which is what they called the Shenandoah Valley, uh, we do have a, an army that is now fed. We're still dealing with unhappiness and low ammunition. But if we can chill in the Shenandoah Valley, it looks like that's where our supplies are coming from. So um, looks like we're going to get the draft going now. All right, let's go ahead and get some of these divisions going down towards Stanton, Virginia here. We're going to grab that supply depot. Everybody's moving kind of slow. Fundraising has uh, ended in success, so now we've got some decent amount of money here, which we're going to flip to throw another party and gain some more prestige that way. So the plan here is to try and move all of my divisions at the same time so that they'll arrive around where the second division is and we'll have the numbers on them. But it looks like my headquarters is going to get there first. Jackson's division's chilling on the river, so they're really not of much use to me at the moment. And now my headquarters is like, nah, we're out. No, 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 no. Get down there, please. For goodness sake. Now my headquarters isn't going to be there, and this may mean that I'm not able to actually lead the fight. Oh, come on. Why would they just turn around and run? I've got numbers on this guy. Ugh. All right, we're into the Battle of Stanton. We only have about 5,700 men against the enemy's 11,000, but we do have reinforcements on the way uh, in the form of Chatham's division. Let's take a look here at the uh, situation. Let's look at the strength report. Uh, you can see there we're outnumbered 2 to 1, but we do have... Uh, where do we get the... Here we go. Over, overview... I guess it's not going to tell us when he's coming. But we do know they're coming in about four hours. So we've moved on to day two. Nothing really happened on day one. I've got my two brigades here covering the crossings. Chatham's division has arrived, giving us about even odds. We're almost identical in numbers. Uh, morale's almost the same. He holds the key objectives that we're after, and there's a good chance he's probably dug in there. So we're going to have to get across. We don't have our army commander here, which means we don't have our cavalry or our other division, which is why we're kind of fighting with one arm tied behind our back at the moment. So we're just going to have to make the best of it. Well, isn't this interesting? Just as I'm start starting to cross with just my artillery, he's going to move forward with an entire brigade, and he's going to catch my artillery in a spot where there's probably not a lot I can do to save him. Because they happen to be out front. Was not expecting that at all. I'm going to very quickly try to give them orders to come back across. But I'm not entirely sure that they're going to get them in time. There's really not a lot I can do to save them. Except maybe quickly send the 1st North Carolina with their 500 and some men to try and save them. I'm also going to send the 5th Louisiana ahead. But everybody else I'm going to have to try and hold back as best I can. Oh boy, this is going to be a major problem here. Already lost one of the guns. They are starting to pull back though, so that's good. Oh, here comes another brigade coming over here. You boy, who was killed? Commander of the 4th South Carolina Battery was killed. Yeah, and then his unit was just wiped out. Ugh, okay. Commander of the Richmond Howitzers has been wounded, so we lost both of those batteries. Ugh, what a nightmare. He caught me napping there. I, I issued that movement thinking there's no way they're going to move off of their high ground. But here they come, and they're coming at me pretty aggressively. All right, we need to tell Forest Brigade to stay put. Try to order the rest of these guys to fall back before it's too late for them to. All right, Hill, just get your brigade back. All right. In the meantime, 
we've got an attack coming at this bridge here that we've got to try and defend thankfully we do have some cover but this is a, these are some new units so they've still got mis, mixed muskets some of them actually that whole brigade has mixed muskets so that's not even a good situation Do I get, oh here's Whitworth's right here let's get the Whitworth's over here so they can get some good accurate fire going against these guys I gotta get the first North Carolina back by some other route. Do not cross in front of that brigade, please. I gotta try and save this battle as best I can. Alright, we've gotta try and do something over here. I wish I had better weapons here, but I don't. Man, we're losing a lot of men because they're firing on the, this one regiment here. I need to hurry up and get these other guys up along the fence so they can start firing back on them. Seven Tennessee, that's who I'm waiting on. Double time it, boys. Get over there quickly. We need to start putting some fire into the flank of this 10th Vermont. 8th Kentucky is probably going to fall back, but we can send the 6th Kentucky up into a reserve position on them. We could actually probably send some help over there too, in the form of another regiment or two, if needed. Preferably somebody with decent weapons, like the 5th Louisiana. They've got Lawrence rifles. Alright, 15th Maryland's moving into a reserve position. 7th Tennessee, I need you up here quickly, please. Once they start firing, I think we'll be able to stabilize the situation here. Casualties are pretty even at the moment, so that's a good, good thing under the circumstances. First North Carolina is probably just going to have to stay there. Let's send some skirmishers out against this battery. Alright, here he comes toward the river crossing. This is one thing we do need to worry about. I'm going to send the 5th Louisiana right there, actually. Okay, those guys routed as expected. That's okay. We've got the 6th Kentucky can move into their position. We've got covering fire now to help, which is going to force these guys back. But they're going to have to back up pretty far to get out of range of these Whitworth rifles. There we go. All's well that ends well there. We're starting to inflict more casualties than we're taking. That's good news. Now we just sit here and chill. Try and protect the crossings as best we can. Let him keep coming at us. I do still need to pull these guys back. Although it's not the worst thing in the world that I've got them there. I think I might go ahead and hold them. Just because they're giving me eyes I might not otherwise have. At least for now. Now these guys are probably going to reform or else I would cross the river and try to roll up his flank. But I'm going to sit tight for now, knowing that he's likely to reform those guys at least once. We'll let him keep coming at us. Which it looks like he's about to do. He's going to start trying to cross over here. And we should be able to get some good fire into his flank. This battery needs to move up to where they can actually fire on them as they attempt to cross. Again, we get a lot of mixed muskets, which I'm not happy about. Haven't gotten the prestige to be able to upgrade them yet. The only guns that were available were Whitworths, and they're super expensive to upgrade a unit with, with Whitworths. 
He's holding back a lot of his force, including a lot of his artillery. All right, let's go ahead and see what he does here. I'm expecting him to try and make a crossing here. What's going on with these guys? How are we doing? So far, pretty good. Numbers-wise, we're still inflicting more than we're losing. This battery is... Ah, oh, they're, they're idle again. They just... Well, no, I guess they are firing. They're showing as idle, but they're actually firing. Yeah, see, these guys are reforming now. I expected they probably would. I want them to come at me again. He's not attempting to cross, but he's also not pulling back. He's just kind of sitting tight. Fighting continues. The Units on both sides are starting to get low on ammo, but I'm seeing some ammo issues for the Union side, though they're fighting from cover in many cases. I'm trying to get additional fire on him because the casualties are almost even, which is not what I want. I don't want to just be shooting it out with him. So, All right, we're going to go ahead and send one unit across the river because I expect if I do that, he's going to descend on me with this brigade on his left. So I don't want to send too much in case I've got to rapidly pull them back. But I've got to do something to change the situation because right now we're just stacking bodies and nothing is changing. Now I'm going to send the 5th Maryland across to cover their flank a little bit. only noon. I'm just waiting for these guys to make a move. And they haven't done it yet, which really surprises me. There we go. Now we're getting on his flank, which means he's going to have to break so that mixes things up a little bit that changes the equation which is what we were after let's keep it going I'll keep the 15th Maryland following them to to cover their flank but we'll send the 6th Kentucky to again kind of increase the odds a little bit in our favor These guys have mixed muskets, which means not much range. All right, I'm going to send skirmishers up to watch this battery, although he's got cavalry coming down now. Not entirely sure how best to go about this, because I'm just worried he's going to descend on me with his full strength. All right, let's start crossing. Uh, one of them just broke. Darn it. Still no movement from his main force. Really surprising. units across. We 
We need to try and take advantage of our localized numerical advantage before he comes down at me with everything else. And he, and he does have this issue of ammunition at the moment, which could work to my favor. Numbers wise, we're still pretty even on casualties. Alright, time for these North Carolina boys to advance. Call your skirmishers in. Alright, let's get more firepower on them, spread out our forces a little bit. Still watching these guys up here, they're still not moving. Don't know why. He's basically hanging out this brigade to dry. Which is low on ammo and slowly getting surrounded. Alright, let's hit him. I doubt it's enough to turn the tide of the battle. But we'll try it. It's still showing as a minor defeat. The line, if anything, is turning us slightly in his favor. All right, six Kentucky hit that battery. Getting some nice prestige out of it. And we did significantly increase the casualty difference. He's lost about 300 more men than I have now. Now we just need a chance to recover a little bit here. Let's get our army into formation. Some sense of order. And wait to see what he does with what's left of his army. It's almost 6 o'clock now. We're going to be running out of time on this first day of the, or on this day of the battle means both sides are going to have a chance to recover a little bit, which doesn't necessarily favor me, but it's not the worst thing in the world, because most of these guys for him are fresh, whereas mine have been fighting, and he's lost about 600 more men than I have now, so I've got the morale advantage, he's still got the objectives though, so we'll see what happens, I'm trying to I want to pick off the artillery a little bit, but the problem is right now I'm facing skirmishers. So let's send these skirmishers out to go engage his while I target the artillery. I'm down to just eight rounds of ammunition for my Whitworths, Whitworths though. got good cover up there. That's a good defensive position for the Union. A really strong position. I don't know if he's going to redeploy at the start of the next day. I'm hoping he doesn't. He did. And then it redeployed me, even though I had him redeployed already. So, okay. Uh, but the, it looks like he has given up this first objective. So that's actually good news. I'll be able to go ahead and move in and take that. Numbers-wise, we're still pretty even going into day two. My morale's higher than his now. So we'll try to advance forward and see where his new position is. I was just starting to move McGowan's brigade over toward the Bishop Heights to see if I could get that high ground. And I noticed that he was on a major move toward me. So let's go ahead and move up to a stronger defensive position if we can. And then we sit and we wait. Looks like he's going to come at me. 
So he caught up to me before I could pull McGowan's division or McGowan's brigade back. So I'm actually moving into a position to try and support McGowan as best I can. I've got the 6th Kentucky way the heck out there. And they're probably going to get driven off. I'm going to move the 2nd Kentucky up into a position where they're going to come in along this fence here. 3rd Virginia is going to come right up into here on the fence. Yeah, there goes the 6th Kentucky. They just broke. They got hit by regular cavalry units. Meanwhile, here comes the rest of them. 11th Georgia is up there kind of by themselves on the left. This is a major assault by the Union. It's going to be make or break time for us. Oh, there's that U.S. Cav going into another one of my regiments. He's only got 350 men. Hopefully we can break him. Who was wounded? Lily. He's commander of the 8th Kentucky. Wounded in that cavalry engagement. And so there goes another unit. That U.S. Cav has broken two of my regiments now. Pull the pull this other regiment in behind the fence. Get some cover. I'm a little worried about the fourth West Virginia over here. They may get on my flank, so I'm gonna send. 13th Maryland over here to help them. Uh, this is looking bad for us right now, though. That U.S. Cavalry unit just hammering my entire flank. They're going to single-handedly win him this battle. If somebody doesn't throw him back. Because we're handling the infantry. You can see we're driving his infantry back. It's that darn cavalry on the flank that's giving us fits. There we go. We finally broke him. Thank you, boys. Nicely done. Uh, now they broke too. Darn it. And now the U.S. cab isn't broken? Because they look like they had broken. He's still got 300 men. Jeez. Three. He's now broken three regiments. There we go. We're throwing back the infantry. We need help, though. 11th Georgia can't do it by themselves. They're about to break over on my left. They got ganged up on a little bit. And this is a bit of a problem over here. Ugh. I just didn't have a good situation from the start on this battle. And not having my whole army certainly doesn't help. Yeah, there goes the Georgia boys. I expected that was going to happen. He's trying to get around me. Ah, both sides have lost 20%. I just don't think I can keep this up. First thing I need to do is I need to pull what's left of McGowan's brigade back. We need to tighten up our lines. Starting to pull back the right flank now, and his 4th West Virginia just got out here kind of by themselves. That's what we like to see. 
that's an opportunity, an 800-man regiment that we can isolate. Do some damage to while he's got no help. Unfortunately, he broke way too easily. We didn't inflict nearly enough casualties on him. Right, I'm trying to pull these units back as best I can. So I can reform my line. Here he comes. He's coming right down the center with what appears to be a attack column. At least three regiments. They're exhausted. They're isolated. And that's the perfect situation for me. Both sides have lost 20%, 12,000 men. Or uh, 1,200 men. 2,400 men. I can't read. But the rest of them, it looks like they're... Oh, are they trying to get over there and cross and come up behind me? That may be exactly what they're doing. I have to send a couple regiments over here to watch these crossings. He may also just be trying to get at me, around me over here. In which case, we'll, we'll send a brigade over there, to, or a regiment over there to watch. Just not sure what he's up to. It's only 10 in the morning. Morale's good, but we're not driving his down nearly enough. Interesting. Holy Communion. Every sane man feels fear on the eve of battle. In those dark moments, even the least religious people will turn to God for guidance and forgiveness. As the man of the cloth accompanying you used to say, uh, uses, uses to say, to guide your flock to victory, he has arranged for a hill of commun communion on the eve of battle. These men will march to the sound of the guns with joy in their hearts, knowing they will enter it with no burden of sin. Morale in your unit is greatly improved. All right, so what does that mean for us on the battlefield? Um, not really seeing any significant change, and right now the Union's not attacking. So everything's pretty quiet on the battlefield. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just marching out with my two units that have Whitworths because I know they can engage the Union at a place where he doesn't have the range to fire back unless he closes the gap. So I'm just moving in. Uh, we're going to run out of time, though. I'm just trying to force him to either pull back or attack. And we are shifting things in our favor a little bit. But we're running out of time for the day, unfortunately. Now we got artillery coming down on us. So I'm actually gonna oh, he just moved up to engage us at a closer range. Now he's moving those guns up. That's pretty smart on his part. Send out the skirmishers. There's the end of the day. All right, so this is a massive fight that is not ending easily. 3,000 casualties for the enemy, 2,800 for me. That's 25% of both armies, and we're still going. And morale's high enough that it's not going to end anytime soon. Wow. Mm. These losses are going to be tough for me to replace. So I've been sitting tight for most of this next day of the battle, and things have shifted to minor victory territory for the first time. 400-man advantage on casualties. Uh, if I can just sit tight and drive him back now, we might get a victory out of this. We did. We got a victory. So now the only thing that's left to see is the final numbers. But uh, that was a bloody one. But that was a victory nonetheless. 2,900 casualties for us. 3,500 for David Hunter. We did not use our full army. That was about uh, 2,900 men out of maybe half my army. Uh, but we gained a nice amount of prestige, enough to be able to hopefully equip the rest of our units with decent weapons. So unfortunately, it's going to cost 300 
for every unit I give Whitworth rifles to, so I may just hang on to the Prestige and wait till so we have some other weapons besides just Whitworths. The Whitworths are great, but we can't go equipping every single unit with them. Also, don't appear to be too many options as far as I don't want Leonidas Polk at all. Fitz Lee, we're going to assign him to one of our open spots. Yeah, I think we're just going to have to wait until some other weapons come available. I just can't go spending that kind of prestige to get Whitworths for everybody. Uh, in the meantime, we've got about 22,000 men. We definitely need some more artillery. In fact, you know what? I'm going to make that the priority uh, is to go ahead and add some batteries to this 3rd Division. It's going to take a couple of weeks for them to arrive, and we're definitely going to need better guns. Oh, we have no guns available either except six-pounders. All right, so we're kind of stuck there, but we're going to wrap it up right there. Let me know your thoughts. Use the comment section below. We'll be back picking up uh, in late July of 62, and we'll see what we can do with this army. Thanks for watching.